beta-galactosidase which helps in the digestion of lactose and likewise it improves the lactose intolerance. Likewise, probiotic microorganisms produce certain other metabolites which are responsible for the detoxification of carci carcinogenic component. And by producing short chain fatty acid component which helps in the reduction, uh, reduction of risk factor for the colon cancer. Now I will talk on levels of probiotic. How exactly probiotic microorganisms interact with the pathogenic organism or interact with the epithelial cells or host cells for controlling pathogenic microorganisms. So this diagram shows after digestion of food particle which enter into the epithelial cell and finally which enter into the blood through lamina propria. Likewise, pathogenic microorganism or metabolic product produced by the pathogenic microorganism also passes through the epithelial cell and finally to the blood through lamina propria and cause severe systemic infection. To fight with this, probiotic microorganism shows three different levels. Very first one is it interferes with the growth or survival of bacteria in gut lumen. It directly inhibit the entry of pathogen into the gut either by colonization resistant or by producing certain kinds of toxins. Second level of probiotic activity is improve the mucosal barrier. By interacting with the epithelial cell, columnar epithelial cell which are present in intestine, it produce mucins. It induced to produce mucins and the mucins which dissolve in water and form mucosal layer. So it induces the mucosal layer formation which again inhibit the entry of pathogens into the epithelial cell or it also enhance the immune system. So pathogen probiotic microorganism directly enter through the some kind of the columnar epithelial cell like M cell it enter into the lamina propria where it activate the T cells where T cells start to produce certain cytokines. This particular cytokines which shows some anti-inflammatory responses or T cell which activate again B cells and then B cells which converted into plasma cell which are responsible for the synthesis of secretory antibody like immunoglobulin M. This immunoglobulin A which secretes into the gut and at where it target the pathogens. Third level of probiotic action is affect the systemic immune system in which again it activate the certain blood cells that blood, blood cells which passes from the submucosal or lamina propria to the surrounding lymph, lymph node at where it activate the blood cells that activated blood cells which passes into the blood and likewise it enhance the systemic immune systems. This particular diagram shows how exactly probiotic microorganism inhibit the entry of pathogenic microorganism or how exactly pathogen uh, probiotic microorganism kill the pathogenic microorganism in the gut. In first diagram it shows probiotic microorganism directly inhibit the entry of pathogens by physical barrier it is called colonization resistant so pathogenic microorganism cannot able to come into the blood through epithelial cell in second diagram probiotic microorganism interact with the some of the epithelial cells like goblet cells in response to the probiotic microorganism this kind of the epithelial cell which start to produce mucin this mucin which dissolve in water and form mucus la mucus layer so by mucus barrier again it inhibit the pathogenic microorganism to enter inside the body in third diagram probiotic microorganism interact with the particular kind of epithelial cell like enterocytes this enterocytes which start to produce a certain proteins like zonal occludens which are responsible for the tightening of intercellular integrity or it enhance the tight junction and by which it inhibit the pathogenic microorganism entry. In fourth diagram, probiotic microorganism itself produce certain kinds of toxin in gut and the toxin directly target the pathogenic microorganism. In fifth and sixth diagram, by immunomodulation, probiotic microorganism enhance the immune cells which are present in submucosal layer. Like in the Fifth diagram, pathogenic microorganism interact with the dendritic cell and activate T cell and that activated, activated T cell which start to produce certain kinds of cytokines and that cytokines which are responsible for the inflammation. So ultimately this pathogenic microorganism are responsible for the inflammatory diseases. At that time pathogen probiotic microorganism interact with the dendritic cell and it channelize the pathway, immune system pathways in such a way that 
it start to produce certain anti inflammatory component and by which it can able to control this immune system again this diagram shows the exact me exact mechanism of immunomodulation in which probiotic organisms which either interact with the epithelial cell or probiotic organism which interact with the immune cells which are present present beneath the epithelial cells like in first case probiotic microorganism interact with the epithelial cell like pinit cell this in response to the interaction pinit cells start to produce certain kinds of protein like defense in protein this defense in protein are cationic protein which interact with the lipo which interact with the some of these molecule which are present on bacterial cell wall and likewise it is responsible for killing of pathogenic microorganism in second case pathogenic probiotic microorganism interact with the epithelial cell and which are responsible for the tightening of this tight junction or responsible for the maintaining integrity of this columnar epithelial cell in third case this probiotic microorganism interact with the epithelial cell and this in response to the interaction epithelial cells start to produce mucus and through mucus barrier again it inhibit the entry of pathogenic microorganism likewise pet probiotic microorganism also can able to interact with the immune cells like t cell can be activated by interaction of probiotic microorganism with the dendritic cell particular ligand which are present on probiotic microorganism are called microorganism associated molecular patterns which is recognized by particular receptor present on dendritic cell it is called toll like receptors so upon signal transduction this dendritic cell which which again transduce signal to the t cells t cell can be differentiated into either t hel t helper 1 t helper 2 or t reg regulatory cells according to response again this t cell which start to produce certain kinds of cytokines say for example for controlling inflammatory diseases t cell can be differentiated into th2 and which start to produce certain kinds of in uh, cytokines like interleukin 4 interleukin 2 interleukin 10 which act as a in anti inflammatory responses next i will discuss some of the diseases like one of the diseases antibiotic associated diarrhea which is mainly caused by disruption of normal microbiota present in gut through antibiotic therapy as dr bhavesar has told our gut which contain around 10 10 rest to 10 to 10 rest to 11 microorganism per gut of intestine intestine which are responsible for the maintaining balanced, balanced ecosystem inside the our body which are primary require to maintain the normal health of individual administration of particular antibiotic for controlling disease disrupt the this balanced ecosystem and ultimately which results in the overgrowth of enteropathogens enteropathogens like clostridium this clostridium which start to produce certain toxins and which are responsible for the diarrhea again with help of probiotic microorganism as we have seen certain mechanism this probiotic microorganism inhibit the entry of either this clostridium microorganism into the epithelial cell or this probiotic microorganism produce produce certain kinds of toxin which are responsible for controlling this kind of this kind of overgrowth of clostridium and by which again it can able to balance the microorganism which are normally present in intestine again like cancer cancer is uncontrolled cell division process in which the normal gene which are responsible for the normal cell division and growth which is mutated upon mutation this gene are responsible for the cancer so there are three different cancer associated gene that are proto oncogene tumor suppressor gene and apoptotic gene this proto oncogene produces certain proteins which are responsible for the normal gr growth and cell divisions upon mutation this proto oncogene which is converted into oncogene oncogene which activate or switch on the cell division process permanently and likewise which is responsible for the uncontrolled cell division process again at that time this kind of cell again can be controlled by two different gene that is tumor suppressor gene and apoptotic gene tumor suppressor genes which produce proteins which are responsible for the controlling this kinds of the tumor or tumor suppressor gene which produces proteins for the dna repair of this kind of the mutated 
डीएनए और ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन विच एक्टिवेट दी अपोप्रोटिक जीन अपोप्रोटिक जीन इज इज नथिंग बट प्रोग्राम शल डेथ इन विच इट प्रोड्यूस सर्टेन काइंड ऑफ प्रोटीन दैट प्रोटीन आर रिस्पॉन्सिबल फॉर किलिंग दैट होस्ट सेल इट सेल्फ सो कैंसर इज ओनली कॉस्ड वेन प्रोटो ऑंकोजिन इज म्यूटेटेड इन टू ऑंकोजिन एंड दैट म्यूटेटेड सेल विच एसकेप्स फ्रॉम द ट्यूमर सप्रेसर जीन मेकेनिज्म एंड अपोप्रोटिक मेकेनिज्म This kind of mutation are caused by certain chemicals. These chemicals are called mutagen, or particularly it is called carcinogens. This chemical either in ingested into the body or are produced by the certain metabolic actions of pathogenic microorganism which are present in gut. Again, at that time, probiotic microorganism produces certain kinds of metabolites which detoxify this kind of carcinogens, or probiotic microorganism alter the gut flora and by which again it inhibit the pathogenic microorganism metabolic processes or probiotic microorganism produce certain certain kinds of metabolite which are responsible for the activation of tumor suppressor gene and program cell death gene or it activate the host immune system likewise probiotic microorganism also helps for controlling some kinds of inflammatory inflammatory diseases like one of the well known inflammatory diseases is in like ulcerative colitis and crohn's diseases in ulcerative colitis inflammation inflammation occur in some of the portion of colon and rectum and likewise in crohn's diseases inflammation occur in any part of the digestive tract in all of the cases generally immune response is due to the immune response to this altered microorganism or microorganism which start to produce certain kinds of cytokines like interleukin 12 tumor necrosis factor and, and interferon gamma and this 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 kind of the cytokines which are responsible for the causing inflammation as we can see in the diagram in left side diagram t cell can be differentiated into either t regulatory t helper or t cytotoxic cell and t helper cell can be differentiated into th1 and th2 cell th1 cell which start to produce certain kinds of certain kinds of cytokines which are resp responsible for the inflammatory diseases particularly pathogens which induces t cell in such a way that t cell start to differentiated into th1 cell and it start to produce this kind of particular cytokines and which ultimately results in inflammation in right hand side diagram this probiotic microorganism particularly inhibit the entry of pathogenic microorganism into the epithelial cell or probiotic microorganism enter into the epithelial cell and finally it which activate the dendritic cell and activate the t cell and finally it produce certain kinds of anti inflammatory component like interleukin 10 or probiotic microorganism control the pathways by which pathogenic microorganism either produce this kinds of inflammatory component like in interleukin 2 tumor necrosis factor likewise likewise hepatic again probiotic microorganism also helps in controlling hepatic disease so whatever the microorganism which resident in intestine play a significant role for controlling hepatic diseases alteration in the content or any kind of microorganism in this intestinal flora which results in, into the disruption of hepatic microorganism as we can see in the diagram whatever the pathogenic microorganism are present which produces certain kinds of metabolites these metabolites which enter into the epithelial cell and finally which reach to the hepatic cells at where it disturb the hepatic cells or bacteria pathogenic bacteria which produces certain kinds of metabolites by which it can able to interact with epithelial cell or it will disrupt the integrity of epithelial cell and it can it can able to pass through the epithelial cell so by bacterial translocation pathogen microorganism directly can able to enter into the blood again probiotic microorganism inhibit the direct entry of pathogenic microorganism into the body or directly it produces certain kind of toxin which particularly binds with the pathogenic metabolites and likewise it helps in the hepatic diseases likewise patho probiotic microorganism helps in controlling number of different diseases like lactose intolerance number of diarrhea like antibiotic associated diarrhea to travelers diarrhea irritable bowel syndrome diseases hyperlipidemia and like 
hyper blood, blood, blood cholesterol and finally i would like to talk on selection of probiotics again for selection of microorganism as a probiotics there is number of criteria criteria that are safety technological functional and desirable criteria for the safety criteria first step for the isolation of microorganism for the probiotic microorganism should be identified at their spe species level by which we can able to know the origin and physiolo physiological criteria of that particular microorganism second selected microorganism should be non pathogenic and non toxic for the human host third that pet that selected microorganism should be devoid devoid of virulence factor particularly like antibiotic resistant gene likewise in technological criteria selected microorganism should be genetically stable and it, it should remain viable during the processing of probiotic product and during the storage or after the comple completion of storage period of the product micro probiotic microorganism should be remain viable in adequate amount to confer the individual benefits likewise probiotic microorganism also show good sensory properties and next in functional criteria as probiotic microorganism has to pass from the gut it has to show it it should resist toward the gastric acids particularly probiotic microorganism should ca can able to resist up to ph2 and likewise it it should can able to resist to the bile salt tolerance and microorganism should be colonized themselves into the epithelial shell and finally isolated microorganism should have some desirable phys physiological criteria like it shows some kinds of immunomodulations shows some kind of antagonistic activity against pathogenic microorganism cholesterol metabolism properties lactose metabolism properties anti mutagenic and anti carcinogenic properties now i would request dr bhavesh sir to proceed with the next part yeah friends as professor rashmin has rightly explained that mul mul magnitude of health prospects are there due to this probiotic preparations so present market is flourished with lots of food preparation containing this kind of good probiotic bacteria but the basic three problems all this product are